<laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the third Linux user group. So we're going to talk, like I said earlier, before everybody joined, we were going to talk a little bit about apps today, but I don't really have a plan. Um, we'll, we'll just kind of wing it as we did the last two times, and then we'll talk a little bit towards the end about a topic for next time that we can kind of get, get together on. Which is, going to, which is going to be next or less. It really is not, <laughs> Steve. It really, really is not. Um I'm in. I'm in the midst we'll of my long-term review of long, of Nix, and I don't want to talk about it outside of that because I don't want to <laughs> spoil it. So, um. okay. So basically, you can sum up your your review. It's not a disco, not for everyone. Move on. Yes. Okay. Um, so, I, what I thought we could do is start going to start off. It go around and say, what's your favorite open source app? Okay. We'll, we'll we'll start with uh, I'm gonna call you Jajunk. <laughs> Is that how you pronounce no. your username? Jajunk. 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 That's Jajunk. fine. Um, I don't think I have a a favorite one. Honestly, one you, one you use the most. Well, right? the one I'm using the most right now is Geary, my email client. Mm -hmm. Um, just because I absolutely hate everything and. I want an email client that is just an email client. I just want to read my email. I don't want to do anything else with it. I don't need it to be Thunderbird and Task Manager and RSS Feed Reader and all that other stuff. I just want it to read my email. That's it. Email client. Actually, Go ahead. Yeah, email client, and it's, that's all it does. That's no, what I'm... Okay. I know it's not fancy for everybody, but it's super happen. cool, but that's... That's what I'm using. You guys find that email clients on Linux are all kind of terrible, almost universally. Um, They're all I mean, terrible. Thunderbolt's, Thunderbolt's getting there extremely aren't many options out there. there. Uh, uh, destruction, Destructoron. So, Destructotron. Destructotron. <laughs> yes. I'm just going to call you the next guy because you got dot .nix there. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, what did you say? I'm sorry. Um, I was saying that Thunderbolt's getting better. Like It's going to get exchange support soon. So, you know... <laughs> The corporate settings and go. Oh, yay! We, we we can use this now. Like it's get it's getting there. I, I see Thunder getting there. The UI designs got better. It's more clean. See, I hate the new redesign. I absolutely despise it. So they made yeah, the other way around. They made this big deal about how awesome the redesign was going to be, and then it came out. And to me, it looked exactly the same as it did before the update. Except for they put this gigantic honking search bar at the top, which you can't get rid of. Now, you can get rid yeah. of it now, but when it first came out, you couldn't get rid of it. And it was like all this white space around. Like They, they put the gigantic honking padding right along the side of the, of, of the thing so they could center it. It's like, first off, just, just get rid of all the padding. and I mean, not all of it, but some of it. And spread it all the way along. But it, it I, I got horrible. I got, super, I got super confused because I installed it and I was like... What did I do wrong? Like, and I, I got the wrong version. Like, I, I couldn't really tell because I don't use it all the time. You know, I, it has been a long time since I used it. So I did the same exact thing. I was like, man, what did I, did I get the wrong version or something? Like, I had to go look and make sure. Well, they touted it, a redesigned, like, account setup, but it looks exactly the same as it did before. They, they touted a redesigned calendar. It looks exactly the same as it did before. Now they are redoing like the the mess. They, if you have a vertical message thread, or you know, like a message you know feed or whatever, they're redoing that so it looks kind of more like what Mailspring does, and that looked cool. But I don't trust them anymore because they showed all these awesome pictures when they were touting the redesign of all this stuff that was going to happen, and it never happened. It just looks exactly the same, but with a search bar at the top. It, I mean, maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm just wrong about. It. Or maybe I'm still on an old version for all I know. That'd be hilarious. Yeah. No, <laughs> but, I, I agree with you, Matt. It just was really bad. I use Thunderbird because it's like the, the only one that will work well across different uh, graphic stacks. Um, it, Mailspring is probably my favorite, but if you don't use GNOME, it doesn't look good. So. Just use just use the mail client in Vivaldi and call it a day. No, I use that. It's horrible. He will never do that because it's because to him a browser is a browser. It's not anything else. Then I might as well just use I, the web mail that Zoho comes with, which is just a horrifying statement to make. To be honest, to be honest, uh, I don't I don't use either. I just use uh, I have an email at Vivaldi.net, 
because they offer an email, a webmail, in case you didn't know that, and I use it in the sidebar. That's it. Oh, it's like a, a web panel? Yeah, a web panel. I, I use it in a web panel. That's it. If, I, if, if the email is too long to read, which is rarely, which is rare for me, uh, uh, the last the last email that I received, really received from someone was for a, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, a a sponsor spot. I don't know, they contacted me after a year of not doing YouTube, but uh, anyway, they, they contacted me like two weeks ago. They, they wanted me to advertise their sex store. So Awesome. My, my best email that I got for that was KFC deodorant. I was like, yeah. <laughs> that's the best thing ever. <laughs> like, awesome. All right. Um, I'm going to, again, mispronounce a, a username, Sinek. Your, your Sinek name? or Sinek. What's your favorite app? Uh, I don't really think I have them. I'm just what's the one? A, what's the one you use? Uh, you guys are killing me here. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got I, those I, I got all my favorite apps right now. Okay. Wh which one doesn't fail the bug checks? Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, fine. Uh, I will go then, and I will say my favorite one at the moment. I'm going to sound like Steve here for a second. It's Vivaldi, actually. It's my favorite app. It's not open source, though. Uh, so I suppose I should t talk. I asked for my favorite open source uh, thing. So i actually been getting back into ZimWiki, which is a like a note-taking application. And I have been searching for a good note-taking application forever. Like, I try Use all... Joplin. Use Joplin. No. <laughs> Joplin sucks. It, it's slow as shit. Um, yeah. if I want to, if I, by the time Joplin launches, I've forgotten what note I want to take. Okay. That so uh, it's just slow. It's too slow for doesn't, me. Doesn't help if you use a snap either. No, 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 it makes it worse. Wait, wait, way worse. <laughs> um, wait. Who said wait? Oh, I, <laughs> the, the wait. little green bar around the, the thing when some, when somebody talks is just not noticeable enough for me. And uh, that's why I always ask who's talking. All right, anyway, so my so ZimWiki probably is my favorite at the moment because I've been getting back into it. It's my only downside to it is that once you get into it and you start putting your notes inside of it, it's really hard to take your notes out and put them somewhere else if you were to go to a different app because they're not stored in a traditional format. And because they don't use traditional markdown, you can't even like transform them into something different like regular markdown because they, they for whatever reason they chose not to use like like in markdown you use hashtags for headings right in zimwiki you use equal signs for whatever reason i don't know why it's silly but that's the way you do it and there are a few other things like you um plus and 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 colon create links instead of the normal way of creating links and i understand why they did that because they're creating a wiki piece of wiki software but it's some of those things just make it non-transferable over to you know something different if i were to leave i use here here's the here's the funny thing though is that i forgot how to use it kind of and their documentation isn't you know the greatest they they actually don't talk about some of the features that it has and uh, so i went back the very first video that i ever made that wasn't a podcast was about ZimWiki. I watched that thing. Oh my god, that was so bad. Like it was just an absolute horrendous mess of ahs, ums, and like five second silences between the next word because I didn't know what I was trying to say. It was real, really, really bad. Um, so that left me. <laughs> like I actually still have it open because I want to see if there's anything else in there that I that I need to know. But that video was r astonishingly bad. Also. Uh, I looked at it and I, I was using i3 at the, at that time. That was a nice little theme I had going on there. Um, also, had don't you don't you miss themes because of Nate? Yeah, uh, Darth Vader. Sorry. Yeah. Because of Darth Vader, don't you miss themes? I do, but I actually like. Uh, I'm on IU AYU right now. It's not bad. It's not Grubbox, but it's not bad. Um, so we're gonna. Uh, I kind of rambled on the for so w what's your all you show up is is w on the disc on the discord so what's your favorite save us and tell us your favorite open source app and if you if you say oh i don't really have one i'm gonna ban you 
<laughs> no, no, I kind of do. All right, good. Because um, I used to be a big user of Evernote back in the day, especially when I got out of college and what not. I did OneNote and then I did Evernote. Evernote decided to screw me over and then stop supporting Linux, which was lovely. So I ended up switching to Notes Nook, which operates kind of like Evernote did, but it's all open source. Um, they do have a paid tier, which I do pay for, but it's not horrible. I've used Note Nooks and before. It's a pr it's a pretty good app. I like that it has mobile applications. That's the thing that I miss most about ZimWiki is that mm -hmm. like I want to be able to have a, a mobile app too. So I'm still good lord. I'm still on Google Keep. I hate that thing with a passion. Uh, but <laughs> like I have 15 years of notes in there, and getting them out is impossible. It's just impossible. Um, That's then, always then, my problem. Go ahead. That's always my problem with the note apps is that they that you were talking earlier about you can't transfer it. I have a ton of work stuff from you know like ten years ago or something like that that's in one note. Mm -hmm. So I, I I I can't I mean it's crazy how much stuff is in there, so I can't get rid of it, but I can't uh it's an archive for me now because I don't use it every day. I haven't used it in years, but that I use uh uh Obsidian right now, which I know it's not open source i don't think mm -hmm. um but zettleskin that's a good one i think it's zettleskin i have i have obsidian installed and every every time i make a notes application i get 10 to 15 comments saying oh why don't you try obsidian out and i'm like yeah because it's too confusing like like they have this weird vault system where all of your notes live in a vault and i, I don't get it right a vault is just oh. a folder. It's not, or like directory. Like it's not anything special. They just call it a vault. Just scares me I calling don't... it a vault. Like if you, if something in a vault, that thing's never coming out. <laughs> the, the reason, the reason that the reason they call it a vault is that um, when you set up your, uh, like when you install it, and then you say, "Hey, open a vault or open a folder as a vault," and so just create a folder. Is all of your plugins and all your other bullshit that makes it Obsidian lives in that vault it doesn't live somewhere else on your machine it lives in that vault so for me because i don't want to pay for anything um my vault uh is this is the folder and then i push that to gitlab so if i'm on another machine that's how i get around transferring from different machines and keep all my notes is i just i do a git pull and now i have all my plugins and all my settings and all that other stuff that's it. And I don't, for Obsidian, I don't use folders and all that other stuff in there. I just use, I link to different page, pages and use the graphs and all that other stuff. It's it's the simplest thing that I can think once you use it a little bit. It's not hard. And it's in Markdown, and you can open up your your files. You can open them up in uh, VS Code or Kate or something See, like that to edit a thing. You just don't get the plugins. So it's, e me, it's easy a, to transfer. A vault, a vault implies uh, some type of security measure. Right, like, or like some I kind know, of it's encryption very, yeah. or or a lock or something like that. Yeah, right, it's not it's, just it's not just a, a place for storage. Right, they may as well just call it like a storage room, or, as yeah. opposed to a vault. But well, I, I the thing clever. that I like, um, the thing that I like about Obsidian, is n not that it uses Markdown and not that I use the feature either. Uh, but just the thing that I like about it is that you can actually like link between documents just to reference back and forth or like across multiple documents or notes. Right. Yep. Yep. That's the cool thing that I like about that, uh, which you don't really yep. get in any other application. But for me, for note taking, I just use uh, NB. It's it's really easy. I it's all in one place. It automatically syncs to a private repo for me, so I can access my notes no matter what system I'm on. Uh, it, yeah. I just type them all in Markdown and uh, NeoVim or Vim is my editor, so you know it, it's just plain text Markdown. So yeah. It's quick and easy. Well, and I just here. take notes like a man in his ED. <laughs> Let's just make it an Emacs and just be done with it. <laughs> like we want to torture I ourselves. Have, I already have an operating system. Yeah, I, I was waiting one. for that. I don't need another one. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, Steve, you look looks like you're next. I'm skipping over the people who are muted. By the way, if if you want to chat, you can turn your microphone on. Or um. So, Steve, you got yourself a favorite app that you're using currently? Yeah, uh, I got a favorite. I got a favorite app. Is is Lap It? Say the name again. Slap It. What is that? 
<laughs> Zero <laughs> Linux post, Arch post, install toolkit. <laughs> All right. Oh my All right. God. No, no, no. Hold on a second. Hold, hold, hold Steve on a second. Steve, you went full on Linux open source developer with that name. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> You gotta no, go I, it's shortened to slap it, but no, I, that's not my app of the uh, my my favorite app. My favorite app, and I'm I'll be tooting my own horn here, but uh, it's uh, Joplin. Uh, it's self-hosted Joplin because self-hosted Joplin is pretty quick because it doesn't have to deal with the with the with a third-party server out there. Uh, it just connects to the Raspberry Pi, the server on the Raspberry Pi, which I have locally, it instantly opens. Uh, what I love about it is, since you were talking about Notes app, uh, it really uses pure markdown. It shows you uh, the source code on the left, and it shows you the, the how it's going to look on the right. It automatically syncs. I, uh, I, I access it on my Android, on my iPhone, on my iPad. It, it's been a lifesaver, especially specifically right now, because I'm working on Zlap It. Uh, I'm going to laugh every time you say it, dude. That is, that is a great name. <laughs> it is. I, I like it. I like it. It's uh, it's funny. It's uh, it makes it puts a smile on people's faces because it's funny. Uh, but uh, because of Zlap It and uh, and uh, NixOS right now, I'm taking a lot of notes. Uh, specifically today, I talked to Zany uh, to, to help me with this uh, Vivaldi YouTube issue. He was like, I don't know, buddy. I can't help you. <laughs> so um, so I had to do a lot of research and take notes and put them in, uh, in Joplin. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a lifesaver. And I'm, I've been using it for, for the past few months uh, all the time because... I keep reinstalling the system countless times, and I don't want to lose my uh, my notes. So yeah, it's all saved on my Raspberry Pi, cool. along with Bitwarden. Uh, I've already forgotten how I pronounce his name. Dis Destructotron. Yes, Destructotron. Yes. Yeah. So, sorry, I got it right. Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so my favorite one. This is completely down to my use case. And it's really the only reason why I even touch Emacs, to be honest with you, because I don't need all the features of Emacs for this. But it's Emacs speak. Not many people know, because I really need to update this and then put this in roll call. But I'm a blind Linux user, and graphical screen readers and terminals don't like each other. They will work. Orca does, does have terminal support. But Emacs, if you use Emacs speak, which is an extension of Emacs that allows... Emacs to, to talk to you and use eSpeak and other speech servers. The the support for like text and the command line is really good. Like if you go into an, an, an like an average terminal with Orca and you start typing a command that takes ages to run that has little, little output like I don't know um <laughs> Nixo Nixo for Ribold switch and it just starts building everything. You got you got to keep pressing control to shut Orca up. And then it says the next thing. Uh, and you know that it's building, but you also want to see, want to know the progress of it. You want to know when, it, when it's done. But e but the Emacs shell with Emacs speak, what this does is if a lot of output comes in at once, it will actually interrupt the speech and it will um, start saying the next lot of output. And then and then if more comes in, it interrupts it again. And it, it it just keeps doing that until you know that it's done. That's the, the reason why I use Emacs and why. Um, and it's it's been a lifesaver in the the TUI, to be honest with you, and the, and the mm. command line. I'm astonished that of all the apps on Linux, that Emacs seems to be the most accessible. <laughs> that, um, that, that it, it, it's just text. Yeah. It's just text, isn't it? That, right. It's just text and text buffers. And if you have a, 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 an extension in there that that speaks the text to you and allow, allows you to do all the Emacs editing stuff, you can just do it, like. Hell, I, I use Telegram for Emacs because it's the only good option on Linux. I use Telegram because it's the only good option. The web client's a load of old rubbish. So, the, again, it's just a lot of text in an Emacs buffer, like the shell. The shell, like, you go into a graphical terminal, do you try copying and pasting some text with, with Orca? You can't do it really. Well, you can as of, as of like, 40, 40, Orca 45. But now, but before then, you just couldn't do it. You you had to control Alt A the entire terminal 
which you don't want to do most of the time. You've got to copy that, paste it somewhere, get the output of the command, just, just what you want, copy that, paste that somewhere else. It was, it was kind of annoying. So in my shell, it's like, it doesn't send any keystrokes to the actual uh, terminal, so you can use Emacs editing commands on the output. So you can just go and copy and paste and cut and do all this good stuff with the shell text. Mm, that's a, that's, that's wow. amazing. That, that's that's, amazing. that's, that's something that, that, that which brings the the, the argument where uh, that uh, Brody brought up in one of his videos a while ago. Um, it's all about how little accessibility 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 features linux has um, compared to other operating systems like apple has the most it's yeah, number I one for say, accessibility yeah i will say i will not use android because of because because of it android i've heard horror stories of, of phones crashing you can't update the phone or talk back dies after an update it's like i don't want to use that i want something that's stable and if we're talking about Linux tools and accessibility, it's mostly there. It's just a few things need work. GTK4, for example. G GTK3, just fine. GTK4, especially on Wayland, they kind of messed it up. You can't flat review anymore, so you can't like see text that you can't tab and shift tab to. So labels, for example, you can tab and shift tab to, and it will read the labels. But like some text, like update progress for... GNOME software in like in Fedora, for example, you can't see the progress because you can't flat review because the toolkit's not giving Orca the shortcuts it needs. So, and that it, it's kind of annoying because GTK three, QT five, and six, their web backends just they just do the thing, and I get it they they want to be secure they want to be secure about it, you know, and, and the toolkit not not be you know and keyboard shortcuts shortcuts not being grabbed at all and stuff, but. Uh, but you know it's been this way for three four years now like i i remember when G gtk4 first came out it was horrible you could barely use it <laughs> yeah well, they just got i agree they just recently got that uh million dollars or whatever from someone and they said that they were going to put most of that to accessibility <laughs> you know you know so. <laughs> bullshit, bullshit. <laughs> okay go to issue 458 i have a bit of a GTK four rant, shall we say? Not not hugely, but I but like the way that I think it should be implemented to fix the Orca issues with text navigation in GTK four because the way it works is that Orca listens for for like an arrow key press or home and end or control home and end to decide what to announce when the cursor moves. GTK four giving Orca the keyboard events, so text so any text editing in a GTK4 text box that just doesn't work. So I said, okay, why not, instead of GTK3 just give it, just giving Orca the entire keyboard, just ask Orca, hey, what bindings are you using? And then just return them, and then Orca goes, oh, these are the bindings that I'm using. And then, it, and then things like flat view work in GTK4 because the grabs are there, but also it should say, right, I I'm also gonna give you the arrow, the arrow, the arrow keys and other things. But my my thing was why aren't we doing this? Because what happens? Because what happens if someone wants to go and use KDE, XFCE, WL Roots, and um, there's this thing on GNOME only that allows Orca to circumvent this and do global shortcuts and things like that. They're going to go on KDE. They're going to go on XFCE or whatever. When uh, I'm so just talk, 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 talking Wayland here, because XOR it works just fine. XFC when they when the session comes out in a few years. Um, let's say they go onto that and then they try and edit text or do flat review, they're gonna find the flat review is just full on its face because they've because now the thing that GNOME isn't is using doesn't work in anything else because it's a GNOME specific thing. And if and if that does happen, it's then left to oh, KDE's got to do something. Now, the roots must do something different. Cosmic might do something different. XFCE will do something different or base it off of what the roots going to do. And that's even if they start doing it. I know KDE is going to because they're a lot more focused on it these days. But oh, yeah. these smaller things like WL roots and, um, you know, and Cosmic, they might do something. But some of the other things, they're just not going to do it. Well, they, that, will not, they will look the... at it and go, 
that's what should we, what, how do we do it yeah that that's the problem with wayland right is that everybody's doing their own things like the stuff that kd is doing is one way of doing things that's the you know is doing their things the only way we've got mm -hmm. wl roots and that's not even good for you know just them it's going you know so even the people who are basing their like w their window managers on wl roots you got hyperland they're doing their own things you know sway did their own things you know uh river's doing their own things like it's a it's an amalgamation of nonsense at this point and it's one of my arguments against wayland even though i'm currently using it it's just it, everything is basically every developer for themselves and there's no standards whatsoever i mean wl root seems to be the thing that a lot of people coalesce around but they also yeah. uh be, i mean so there, there's this idea because uh, from a lot of the stuff you're talking about there, it, it's uh, all about interactability between different applications. And the, and the thing about Wayland is that it's supposed to stop that. Things, it's supposed to be more secure, right? So the, like the, one of the things that was missing in w Wayland compositors for a long time was global key bindings. Like, because you couldn't, when you didn't have OBS in focus, it couldn't register that there was a key binding that was yeah. supposed to affect it. So yeah, th the idea behind yeah. portals is to solve that problem, but, but implemented the global shortcuts portal. Well, <laughs> I, I plus <laughs> everyone's doing their own portal. So you have a KDE portal, you have Ooh. a GNOME portal, you have a Hyperland portal, you have a WL Roots portal, and while that makes sense in some cases, it feels like what they should have done instead was to make portals for individual use cases, like a global shortcuts, uh, global key binding sh portal. Yeah, All these things would work together. It's something, it's something they should be doing for open desktop differently. or free desktop uh, individually. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. Sh it should have been something that was standardized across them. But And I think that maybe yeah. that it will get there someday. Oh, well. uh, but it's... <laughs> Everyone who who's talking like, oh, Wayland is ready for everyone. Mm. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm no. on Wayland right that. now. I'm on right now. Too, too many people. Who, like, Jerry, you were oh. saying something? I mean, it's ready if you use KDE or GNOME, but if you use something else, then mm, not really. It, it's great for oh. people who never switch to anything else. So if you just use KDE, it's fine. If you yeah. just use GNOME, it's fine. If you switch back and forth or you expect to have the same applications work exactly the same way in both, you're going to be out of luck. And if you expand yeah. out into the window managers, just no. Right? Yep. Yeah, um, especially exactly. when using window managers. Yeah, it's not <laughs> <laughs> especially when you especially when you have a 10 series and video well, card. Yeah, if, my, if, my yeah. question is though my question is, why would you switch back and forth? Why would you switch back and forth between like KDE for one session and GNOME for another? Don't try why to not just put stick with one or the other. Reason for this. You know, okay. <laughs> so, I, I mean, there's a good reason for this. I, I don't, I, I don't see any viable reason to swap around like that. I, ju I just don't. Normal people do not. You're right. Absolutely right. I, on the other hand, am not a normal person. Okay. <laughs> we got that. We got that. And, and, uh, this this brings me to a, a, a mini rant, a very tiny rant, Ooh. is why when I tell people I use the thing that works for me and it is one thing and one thing only, regardless what it is, I, I, I tell the people uh, I'm using this because it works for me, it's the best thing for my use case, they keep trying to uh, to, to convince me to use what works for them. They just want to get you back into you know in, in, into their club, I think. They, they want to go. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've got, I've got another Vim user. Wee! No, no, got no, another no. Hyperland user. Got another whatever user. <laughs> what? like I'm using what works sometimes. for me. I know my use. I'm the only one who uses who knows my use case. I'm the only one who knows what works for me. Why are you trying to convince me to uh, to use something else? Why? 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 Well, what, what 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 do you gain? Everyone, you gain notori notoriety or notori notoriety of, of, of converting someone. <laughs> uh, everyone <laughs> has the things that they love, right? Every, everyone has the things that they enjoy. Uh, and and, this and they want to include everyone in their club. Well, 
the, I mean, because they they see the thing that they use as the best thing. So if you're an Arch user, you think the Arch is the best thing since sliced bread. If you're a Nyx user, you think that that thing is the best thing you've ever used in your entire life. You're yeah. never going to use anything different. And you, do, you and there's there's something about the way that Linux and open source has evolved over the course of the last thirty years, where the when you start using something and it works really well for you, and you just decide that you're you're a fan of that thing. There's something in the water that we all drink that basically says that we have to proselytize the thing that's, things that we use because we think that they're so good, they other people can't possibly think otherwise. Um, and it's it's something that I think uh, th there's a good portion of people who think that way. Obviously, we've all seen it. And and it's yeah. not and it's not we, we make fun of the arch guys because they're they for the longest time were the law the Knicks now I think the loud, not, loud it's not it's more Knicks now yeah. it's <laughs> not only the look at our config <laughs> we have we have people using Ubuntu that are like that or OpenSUSE or Debian. You, yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, There's no I, mentioning open Sousa without without the master here showing us the sticker. Hey, yeah, I, spent, yeah. I, I spent good money on this sticker, and if I can't, sh I mean, unfortunately, I can't use my microphone like this. Otherwise, you'd hear me breathing down at the whole damn time. Otherwise, this is exactly how I'd use the mic, just so that the sticker was always on screen. Uh, but otherwise, I had to put it on. So uh, I, instead, I had to be annoying and actually sh move the mic every time I want to show the sticker. <laughs> <laughs> I was for me. I just, I just generalized it. And, uh, oh, hold on a second. Uh, fr fr Fraggle then W. What do you say, for Fraggle? Uh, I just said I just generalize and tell everybody that Linux is always the answer. That's it. <laughs> it is. It doesn't it matter is. how you implement it or anything like that. It's just it's always the answer. Very so. very, very reasonable. But you should open <laughs> use OpenSUSE. W. What were you going to say? <laughs> Well, I was gonna say for you get a separate camera just to point at your open Sousa sticker. <laughs> like the to be like zoomed are, like way in. Like those guys who have like the cat cam or the dog cam on their stream, whatever yeah, yeah. so they're pointing at Mine's pointing at the Sousa sticker. <laughs> That's the best thing. I'm doing that. I have the funny thing is is I have two webcams hooked up all the time. I could do that. It's part of the contract. Like it's part of the contract. <laughs> well, they should get a sponsorship. I, it, it's got a contract <laughs> that you sign when you become an open Sousa, um user. Yeah, uh, Junk, bro, if somebody yeah. was going to sponsor, get sponsored by Open Sousa. It's definitely me. Uh, Junk, you have uh, something to say? I got, I got two things. Uh, I don't know if they still say it. They probably still do. But like back in the day, they used to say that Linux was a cult, and I was always like, no, 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 no. Linux is not a cult. It's a federation of cults. <laughs> yeah. where you're at yeah. many uh, tribes yeah, many too, tribes many, many, many tribes, tribes. Yeah. there's some reasonable people like myself who i'm like i'm really glad that you found your tribe and you have a community of friends just like don't throw stuff at me because i don't always use open source apps uh, which sometimes works out other times and then in other news <clears throat> i think this is the real account uh red hat follows me on uh blue ski which i don't know if that's a good thing or like that's a bad thing. I don't know. They just <laughs> followed me, which is cool, because like nobody follows me on any social media. Hey, I follow but you on Mastodon. What are you talking about, man? But, it, but it's red. Well, yeah, you do. <laughs> just because I got a Mastodon yesterday. But uh, uh, Red Hat. I don't know if that's. Uh, I have like, to rethink how I'm gonna have to rethink how I'm presenting myself out in public. If, 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 Red, if Red Hat is your brand new uh, follower, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I uh, I might have to delete this app. All right. Sorry, that was my two cents. All right, Fraggle. <laughs> let's kind of return to what we're doing. You, what, you have a favorite app for us? Yeah, Blender. Easy, hands down, <laughs> Blender. Absolutely. Like I, I can create anything and everything I want. I can do my video editing. I can do everything except for like image editing. But I mean, that's I mean, there's Inkscape and Creative for that. But can you can um, you? Uh, there's one thing you cannot do on Blender. What? Well, what? Form. Yes, you can. 
<laughs> it has video playback. What do you mean? Absolutely, you can. <laughs> Blender was for making porn. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, here we go. And it's evolved. Thank you, C. That reminds me of someone at the blind school I went to. And he now I'm demonetized. Thank you. And he was freaking. Yeah. He was but yeah, like, but watching that absolutely school, Blender. school laptop. I kid you not. Are you, rec are you recording this, Matt? I am recording it, yeah. I was looking but for the. It, I was, where, did, where, do you, <laughs> where do you? Yeah, you have to edit that part. Sorry. Where do you? Where do you? Uh, where are you posting them? Because I went to look to show. Uh, it's on. It's on my the wife main, to watch it's on YouTube. YouTube. It's on the main. It's on the main YouTube channel. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, to, I thought I looked at. One. Was looking for it the other day. I couldn't find it, but uh, that was a fun one. I can. I will post. If you remind me, I'll send you the link. Um, <clears throat> Thank you. But yeah, it's it's on the it's on the main channel. I've been thinking about putting it on a second channel, like the lugs on a secondary channel. Um, just because they're really long, but I don't, I, I, I'd vote for that because I don't it's always, like uh, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to, uh, to meet all of them. And you guys are a good bunch of guys. So I'd like to, even if I can't show up to one, I'd, I'd watch it. Yeah. yeah same. I, I encourage you. Yeah. Well, like, like the, lugs, the, the late night lugs, uh, the afternoon lugs for, for Matt, uh, for me, it's beyond midnight. So the one, those ones I can't make it on the, on those, so I watch them on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, it's something Oof. I'm thinking about. Um, so, um, Braggle, I can attest to his yeah. love of Blender because he's helped the, the the introductions for the podcast and the thing he's done those for me. Um, awesome. Um, but every time I open up Blender, I'm just, it's it's so confusing. I have no clue what's going on. It it takes time. It takes time to learn yeah. the interface. But I mean, if you're starting out with it or anything like that, just do that. Just watch like tutorials or just learn about the interface first. Don't worry about creating anything to start. Just learn the interface. One That's of my it. once did... you get the interface down, everything else uh, falls into place. One of my I favorite things to do this... is to watch like time lapse speed runs of people creating stuff in Blender. <laughs> so, like those things are like you're a wizard. Those things are awesome. <laughs> I did. I did. I did the same thing on uh, 3D Studio Max back in the day. Uh, I, I learned it so so well. I started giving classes. Uh, I had uh, in my. Uh, I had a, a total of three classes. Uh, I gave sorry a, a total of three lessons to three students, uh, and then uh, I fired myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! It, yeah, it's a special skill to teach people. Yeah, the, the 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 first lesson was how to create a desk with drawers. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Basic lesson. So, the the other the other reason that Blender's um, my favorite is not just because of my uses for it uh, or anything like that. It's that it's it's becoming an industry standard, right? In a pretty big industry too. Yeah. Right, like 3D effects and stuff like that, um, MoGraph and and a, a lot of things. Yeah, 2D animation, 3D animation, like it's massive and it's just gaining momentum and it's really opening the FOSS world to a lot more industries. Um, yeah, in a lot more we, ways. We need a lot of we, yeah. we need a lot of things like that in the Linux world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. OBS yeah. is a so, really great yeah. example of that. But just look look at OBS. That's a big industry standard for like broadcasting. Oh, and yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. You can't. You don't see yeah. anyone, anyone who who streams without OBS installed. And not only that, not only stuff. that. I can give you a bigger, a bigger example. Churches are using it today. Uh, TV stations are using it today. Well, in my local area, at least, uh, mm -hmm. they're using OBS. We're using OBS in church uh, to to broadcast ma uh, Sunday mass to to the elderly. It's amazing. But have yeah. you guys? Isn't, no, isn't, I, go ahead. Isn't OBS like the standard? I didn't it, even know there was other stuff. Well, the, there's is, like like X Split or something like that that is, is yeah, around. It, or that's, just straight FFmpeg. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's <laughs> a different that's a different industry for me. So, so, so yeah. So the, here's here's the thing though, guys, is is that you if have you you notice the things that we talk about that have become standards out in the wider world outside of Linux and FOSS are Blender and OBS, and that's because they're standards here too. Whereas yeah. if we want more things like that. 
we'd have to have more standards. And unfortunately, the thing that the Linux community and the open source community does not do well at all is standards. Um, they don't, they because, don't believe uh, in standards. Because, because, Windows, packaging that, formats. Uh, look, look at system D, like, like System D, Wayland. I mean, there's going to be protest distros for, for people who don't want to use Wayland. You know, um, you name it. Package formats is a good one. Snaps versus flat packs. I mean, like, we have, we can't. This is why we can't have nice things is because nobody can agree on how to do things. And while that is a one of the shining examples of why open source is so good because you can take something and fork it and make it your diff make it different or whatever. You can do do that. That's fine. That's the way open source is meant to be. But it also means is that we don't have things that we all agree on. And if we can't agree on something that is a standard and is universally good here, there's very little chance of any of that stuff being able to be made a standard out in the wider Linux world. I think one of the reasons why like OBS and Blender have so done so well is because there's nothing there's nothing that can compete with OBS. Even when it was fairly new, it was still the best thing there. Right, we we didn't go out, out and create another open source thing that does what OBS does. Yes, FFmpeg was around. XSplit is proprietary. I, so I mean, uh, about a decade ago, we had Fraps, but that died on Windows at least. Then for live streaming, OBS always have been the go-to software in quotes, and. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that that was what I was trying when I was talking to you yesterday, Matt. That was what I was trying to point out about the the blue ski thing. When I promised myself I wasn't going to bring it up today because I guess people get mad about it, but because of the guy who sits on the board. But um, they approached when they were putting their stuff together. They approached uh, some of the Mastodon people because they wanted to rebuild Twitter, but they their number one goal was to federate it because I think their whole goal was uh they don't want elon to ever happen again so they they wanted to do something to have a twitter replacement and they knew that mastodon was already halfway there so they approached mastodon first to see what they could do and what they did when they approached mastodon is like hey we have access and we have money and uh, uh we have backing and we can bring more money and backing how can we make this work? And Mastodon basically told them go pound sand. Well, because they don't take any VC money, they they, they refuse to do it. Because because when you take VC right. money, when you take VC money, eventually those VCs are going to want something in return. No, no, it's not a right. Chari charity, right? Right. right. So. But they didn't. Right. But they they didn't go to Mastodon and said, "Here, take our check." They went to Mastodon and said, uh, "What can we do for Activity Pub?" And that that was the key. And then they had suggestions, and they were trying to work with them. But the whole point is that they don't take VC money, and they didn't want to be. Uh, they they just don't want to work on that largest. I mean, this is how I'm interpreting it. I was not part of these conversations, so this is just my observation. Well, I have so read. Then, I have read that the guy who does Mastodon isn't as open to new ideas as maybe you'd Correct. like him to be but so so when, when the when the guy was alive who created vim he was kind of like this too he was the benevolent dictator for life of vim right and he, right. if you go back and look every commit to just bog standard vim was by that guy since the beginning of time now obviously he's died yeah. rest in peace all that stuff right but but um mastodon is kind of like that now it's not as bad, so like I can't pronounce his name. So, like that guy who who created Mastodon, he does have a team, and there's there's a whole bunch of commits. People can commit to it, but they have such he has he ha, he and his team have such a firm grasp of the ro the roadmap, and he has such a yeah. powerful say in what goes on. I have read yeah. that he doesn't take out outside ideas well, but that has changed over the course of the last year or so. So maybe he's learned his lesson. So like he, he was adamantly, adamantly against like quote tweets. Like they don't call him that anymore, but, right. but he was very yeah. against that, so, but now it's going to happen. And it, it's on the, it's on the roadmap. So he had, I think he has opened up, but I can see right. where, where the th they, maybe that turned him off, but activity pub is open source. They could have used it. They just chose right because of the lack of input, I guess is what you're saying. Well, the lack, the lack of input, input and there is some architecture problems that makes it not scale okay, um, that's true and that's what that it, that makes it not scale so what the blue ski guys are doing is they they came and had solutions and got turned down 
for their solutions. Whether those solutions are real solutions or just suggestions, or I, I don't know. I Like I said, I wasn't part of these conversations. But the reason that's exciting to me is that yesterday I went digging around in the repos, and because uh, Bluesky is, is live, it's open, anybody can go join it. Um, there's no, uh, there's no uh, invite wall anymore. And then they are putting everything on GitHub. So it's all there. Um, I don't know if it had been there prior, but uh, I knew they were going to release it. Um, but even the algorithms and how things work, and it's all on GitHub, and you can go see it. And I've been starting to dig through it. But they have a different federation protocol, but the first thing that's on their roadmap is they're actively trying to work to get the ActivityPub protocol to be interoperable. That'd be cool. So what, what you, right, so if you, if you have, you know, you want to work with the, and that's what's interesting to me. It's not the Bluesky social media. I, I was on it yesterday and it's kind of not my bag, but the technology under it, uh, so I can, here, here's what I envision is that you can, uh, you could be a Bluesky person and you can connect to Lemmy and Reddit and probably never read it, but you can connect to <laughs> Lemmy and Mastodon and PeerTube and whatever else you want to do. But you not host your own, and there's here's the other part too, is that you don't have to host your own server. You don't have to spin up a Mastodon instance. You just have to have an account. And there's there's some cool technical stuff that I'm sure nobody wants to hear, but you, it's more data in the hands of the user that can't be turned off. You can get blocked and muted and all that other stuff, but they can't just take your shit. And they can't, uh, there's no that, there's no walls between Mastodon and Bluesky. That's what I'm interested in and how to do that. And the larger picture about was well, open source and we want to work on these protocols and platforms, but we're going to bring all of this money and shove it into the ecosystem. That excites me very much. Um, because unfortunately, the OBS wouldn't be a standard unless the people who really needed it for professional use cases uh, mm. used it. I mean, it might be an awesome program, but it, it would be a hobby. There would be no funding unless other people uh, that used it for money to make money used it. Well, plus, so if, I, I think, it, if things like Twitch didn't exist, OBS wouldn't have a real reason to be mainstream. Right. right? So, right. so there's a lot, um, a lot of stuff that goes into the reasons why, like, like if, if Blender wasn't so good at animation and all that stuff, yes. it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't have a reason to exist. Out, you know, people have to have a good reason to use it. Yeah. And, and I, I don't think that. Ooh. VC money isn't going to show up because Macedon is cool or there's nice people there. Well, he's, that, there's no, there's no way they, he, they're going to throw money at and. That it, they're going to throw money at stuff that's going to make them money. Well, and because and, Blue Ski is in the normie, normie people space, it's not monetized yet, and they're, I'm sure that's going to happen. But because it's in the normie people space, more people are like, are understanding, like, well, why is this even important? What is well, it? So it's, it's more exposure for open source and federation on the one hand, and then the VC money is flying in because they want to figure out how they can monetize it mastodon was going to um, offer the vc stuff all all the time yeah. like, but he just refused they won't take it it's all crowdfunder which which is one of the reasons why i like it because like i said when you do take that vc money eventually you're going to have to find a way to make money so that those people can make money yeah. and that's yeah. that's what worries me about blue sky is, is that eventually they're going to have to find a way to offer those vc guys a return and yeah. the only way, the only conceivable way is either to a have people pay for the platform, which is uh, Elon. Elon has found out how good that works out, um, yeah. or selling people's data. That's I mean, advertising, yep. right? And yep. that that's what worries me. Quite I mean, the, the, those are the, literally the only two ways you can make money yeah. on the internet is, is advertising or charging people people for the product and. One of the reasons why I prefer Mastodon is because, it, well, I suppose there is a third way, which is Mastodon's way, which is all 100% crowdfunding. But it's not, it, it's not, Mastodon's never going to be a hundred million user service. It's just never going to be that way, right? right. A, it doesn't scale because this technology really, it really doesn't scale because it, in terms of storage, if you spin up a Mastodon server and you then you federate it to everybody, you're going to be out of business within the first 24 hours. Like it, because it stores everything on your server from every server that's out there. Like I self-host my own instance, 
And um, if you, there is a setting, um, at least I host a Plurum instance, and there is a setting in the config where you can set to delete entries in the database after a certain amount of days. So mine is 90. So people don't usually on my instance because it's just me and a friend from school. They don't look at stuff that's 90 days ago. So mm -hmm. the space is kind of taking care of itself. The only time you're going to have issues is, is if you don't have that enabled and then your database balloons to 60 gigs in the space of five, of like a few months and, it go, and then you go oh uh, let me just do something about that uh, well, plus it, I mean that's if you're just running a, a server for one or two people you know this the space is going to be a lot different than if you're hosting it for tens of thousands right because yeah. so there's all kinds of yeah there's there's I'm not I'm not uh, uh, I don't want to be fanboy about service or people or any of that other stuff i just i like the underlying technology and i have my uh i don't want to say political but my ideals and open source is a big part of that and uh you know freedom to own your own data is a big part of that i mean there's a lot of reasons so i, I i'm just i'm just hopeful for what it could be i don't have any faith in anybody and if you start talking about vc capital like i have some very strong opinions that will get you demonetized for sure that i'm not gonna say so uh it's that, I don't know. I just I'm hopeful for where it could where it could lead and the opportunities it produces for guys like me and uh, guys like you, Matt. The, the wider Linux community, uh, I think those are going to be some good benefits. And just as a side note, and then I'll shut up about the whole thing. We can move on. Is that it's not blue sky, it's uh, blue ski uh, specific. And then they're not tweets or toots or something. They're called skeets. Specifically what? because Jack, yes. Specifically uh, because Jack Dorsey, no. yes. They need because to Jack, that. Yeah. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Specifically because Jack Dorsey asked very nicely for the community to not do that. He speaks uh, as it blue sky, and it's forever going to say it like that unless I change it. No. Yeah, no, I'm calling no, it blue it's... sky forever. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. yeah. No. He speak is right. He speak is right. <laughs> I, no, I can but, I can support no. it being called blue ski, but. But make, making a post on Blue Ski should not be called Skeets or Skeet. It's a Skeet. No. <laughs> no, it's a no. Skeet. He, he, he made a big deal. No. He made a big deal no. about it nobody to do that, to call him something else. And then the community was like, aren't you Jack Dorsey? Go pound sand. We're calling him Skeets. So. <laughs> it just sounds like something you get demonetized over. Isn't that? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Isn't that, I isn't that the thing where they like shoot a, a like a Clay pigeon up and you shoot it. Isn't that skeet shooting? Skeet shooting, yeah. Skeet, oh, yeah, skeet shooting. It's, shooting. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's also from that uh, skeet, skeet, skeet rap song. Yeah. I don't know. That's not uh, a bag uh, either, but. That's, that's <laughs> beyond shit. me, okay. Uh, old country but, boy here. <laughs> but Matt, when you talked about advertising on uh, on platforms being one way to uh, to make money, uh, really, did you know, since you're on, you're my fellow foster donor, uh, did you notice lately on Fostodon there's a lot of political talk and and advertisements? You mean like in the federated feed or in the the, the not the, in the federated? Well, in the federated and on the main timeline because there are people who I follow uh, that keep showing they keep retweeting uh, retweeting others. Uh, or boosting others, uh, political posts and advertisements. And uh, at some point there was, uh, for a while, I don't know, they disappeared or they canceled that or whatever, but LTT started posting ads, their own ads on Fostodon or Mastodon. Not Fostodon, but Mastodon, but showing up on Fostodon. Okay, so no, I haven't noticed that, but... I use Mastodon in a web panel in Vivaldi, so all I ever see is my home feed, the people that I follow. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay, um, because... I, I wouldn't touch the Federated feed with a 10-foot pole, even the... Even the... Um, even Even with the... Um, like, Fostodon will, has taken out most of the bad stuff. Like, like, they don't federate with the child, child porn servers or whatever, thank goodness. Um, and there's some demonetization for me. I uh, just cause I said the word. Um, Wrong but, word. Right. But, you know, they, they take out all this stuff. And there's... Because there's some really weird fucking Mastodon servers that exist. Because it's open source and anybody can do whatever the hell they want with it. 
Um, right. So Fasten has taken all that stuff out. But even then, the Federated timeline is full of porn and usually not the good kind. Um, and it's full of weird shit. And you just don't want to touch the Federated timeline. Even the local timeline, which is just literally just Fasted on, is full of some weird, funky stuff. So I just stay away yeah, from it. Yeah, exactly. I follow... Yeah. I follow hashtags. I follow a lot of hashtags. So I follow like Linux and open source and reading and writing and I f- stuff for the Eagles and for the, the Giants and stuff like that. So all my arithmetic. sports stuff. Let's just say it again, Frankel. Re- reading, writing, arithmetic. Yeah, yeah. So I, I follow the hashtags <laughs> that I want and I have people that I follow and then I just stay in the home thing. I, I'm very, very siloed because I don't want to have any exposure to the Federated timeline. It's just not a, it's hey. not a good experience. And, and I think... I think... Thing- uh, Go ahead, sorry uh, uh, I think it's because I followed LTT because I looked at looked up LTT on uh, on Mastodon and I followed them that's why I was seeing a lot of their ads but they were they were basically they uh, they are cross posting from X to uh, oh. to Fos- uh, to Mastodon oh, don't do all their that. ads Just don't cross all their the ads shows. and with a hashtag ad. <laughs> or sponsored. Well, I guess it is, it's going to depend on which one you follow. So I just did a search for LTT, and you, there's like <laughs> six different things that you can follow, and none of them are official. None of them are official because they're cross-posting using uh, using a script or whatever. Yeah, probably. Uh, so, yeah. So they, um, a lot of the a lot of people have set up like RSS feeds that will allow you to follow some of the things like. Ars Technica for the longest time was just a uh, a, a cross post between them and X. And now now they actually have their own thing. The Verge does their yeah. own things now, but it's still basically and, the same thing you're going to see on Twitter because that's just what they do. All those all, all those brands are just going to be posting the things that they post on their website or their forums or whatever. Yeah, and I follow I follow a few French people. Some of them they just cross post political stuff. So <laughs> I keep seeing political stuff on my on my home timeline because the people I follow boost other people's political views. Hmm. Yeah, I stay away from that much stuff as much as possible. Um, also, yeah, I need it's, to... it's blue. I'm sorry, dude, but it's blue sky. I'm gonna call it blue it sky until the day sky. that I die. Blue sky. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> like I did just and I, I'm <laughs> never gonna, I'm never gonna call it skeet or skeeting. Never, because yeah. I don't know what it means where any of you guys are from, but. Like, oh, I didn't even nah, think about that. No, nah, I, I ain't know. even like. Imagine, I like, yeah, man, I, I just, I just sent my skeet out all over the internet. I just skeeted it all over the place. Like, no, <laughs> uh, absolutely not, absolutely not. Well, it's, I mean, it's just, <laughs> as, it's just as bad as toot, right? I mean, toot was the thing yeah. for Mastodon for the longest time, and toot is not near as bad. Well, it's, 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 wait it's a minute, funny, wait though. a minute, toot, 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 toot is not, it's not near as bad. I told someone I tooted. He was like, I thought you said tits. <laughs> and be monetized again. <laughs> You're demonetized. Time in, the, in these user groups. <laughs> it's fine. I don't. I don't even think I turned monetization on for the last one because I didn't edit, edit it at all. Time, no. <laughs> yeah, it's all. It's always Steve's fault, by the way. <laughs> Somebody's just gonna take a clip of uh, Dark Zero just saying that. As a meme, <laughs> just completely out of context. <laughs> there are there are quite a few there are quite a few memes of me uh, w- uh, when I had the when I w- had the podcast uh, of me saying Ubuntu. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> by the way, by the way, uh, I, w- I want to plug not myself. This is not self promotion uh, because it's not mine. Uh, it's uh, a podcast coming soon that uh, will contain th- the three Linux Stooges. We have Josh. Stu- we have Stooges. Stu- Josh, Big Pod, and I. I'm oh. the clown. Josh is the brain. Uh, is the brain and Big Pod is the opinionated person. <laughs> it's gonna be a. Cl- it's it's gonna be so much fun. Uh, especially because it's called uh, "No Talks Allowed." Did you just say it's a misnomer? It's a misnomer. It's a misnomer. <laughs> no Talks Allowed NTA. Uh, it's uh, where we talk about Linux without talking about Linux. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but okay. Um, <laughs> let's talk about 
what should we, anybody, anybody have anything really good that they want to talk about in terms of uh, apps or, or anything, or do you want to move on to something different? Something different. Okay. You know, real quick, you know, you'd mentioned, you know, uh, uh, all the fragmentation in package space and all that. I had made that point yesterday. Um, I think that's the biggest reason I'm against Flatpak and Snap and App Armor, or uh, not App Armor, App Image and all of that. Oh, not as just, well, but yeah. Like, you know, that, that was invented your mentality. You know, caption right. that, guys. <laughs> uh, but no, Flatpaks, Flatpaks have still a long way to go, um, but they are on the right path. I still. Are they uh, really, would, though? I don't think that they really are. I would say so. You can run them anywhere. anywhere. Like you can I'll just put it this way. Anywhere. I'll just put it this way. As an Arch user, uh, because Arch is life. Uh, Nick's is life. I don't as in, uh, because I'm an We're Arch user. We're not having that fight, okay? <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as an Arch user, I have uh, gone through countless dependency hell issues granted uh flatback uh has its own uh storage uh eating uh dependency thing but they never break the only thing that flatback uh, that uh, matt and i agree on when it comes to flatbacks is they need to get uh their per permissions straight uh but other than that i've noticed that they need to get get sorted out and, and... I don't know. I don't know if it's if it's something that I need to change or permission. But let's say you're gonna you're gonna sign to to your uh, Google account, and your Google account has a security key. You know, using like the, the flatback of Brave, for example. If you connect the security key when you like when Brave is running, that's not detected. That is not detected. You've got to close Brave, connect the key, open Brave, re-sign in, do do your security key. I don't know what it is, because I have all devices set to on, so it should be able to access it, but something doesn't update when... I, yeah, I it's a permission. It, it, it sounds device. like yeah, it sounds like a permission issue that you need flat seal for. But that's what that's what we're talking about when we talk about their permissions. There are some apps on the flat on Flat Hub that have that have the perfect uh, kind of permissions. They have gotten their permissions things correct. Uh, but oh, okay. that's the minority. Unfortunately, uh, it's the minority. That's, we need that's, the majority to fix it. That's mm -hmm. yeah, but that's not a flat pack problem. That's a developer problem. Okay. That's okay. a developer when he when he built the application or when he packaged the flat yeah. pack. Yeah. Right. Build it. Correctly. Let so me rant. I don't. Let me rant about flat pack for just a minute. Okay. Oh no! We started <laughs> oh no! <laughs> we started off. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, done. Okay. So you're welcome. Flat flat packs are in theory meant to be the secure containerized thing that's what it's supposed to be right and you can containerize it you can have all the dependencies and libraries in this one little package and it's meant to solve the dependency hell that steve was talking about and one of the one of the features that they tout is that it's secure right you, you can control the security through permissions but the thing about security and permissions, it only works as if it's the user that's in control of the security and the permissions. But it and is it, the user. Uh, oh, the, you yeah. think it's the user, but if you download certain applications, the developer has the opportunity without ever telling you to give it full access to whatever it wants, if it thinks it needs it. So it can have access to the home directory, it can have access to your devices. It doesn't need to ask you permission to get those things because it syncs as it needs it. Now, most most developers probably are trustworthy and whatever you can do that but because it's not in the hands of the user 100 percent of the time now you can go turn those things off yes that's where it's in the hands of the user and in the vast majority of cases a lot of the developers do follow the protocol of having you it you can check what permissions it's got you right i know you can you can it. oh no okay the the grand idea behind flatpak is that it's something similar to android every time you download an application on android it pops up this thing here's the things that it has permissions about would you like to allow it to have those permissions and you could yes or no okay you can uh, do that though no do it you, from the command line it says the permission it gives you the permissions and said do you want to make do you want to change these do you want to make changes to, to system installation GNOME software and everything else just hides it from you. But if you go do do Flatpak install, no, 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 no. What it is? No, okay. So all the permissions are listed in Flatpak, which is a separate application that you have to go download to see. 
Okay, and yes, it says would you let if you download from the terminal, but I guarantee you the vast majority of people who are downloading things from Flatpak aren't doing so from the terminal. They're doing it from GNOME software. They're doing it from Discover. Both now Discover does a much better job with the permissions thing than GNOME software does. But this the idea <laughs> here is still that there are default. None of those things should be allowable without explicit permission from the user. And, and I'm talking about granular permission during install, not something that you have to control from an outside app that you don't have installed by default. Steve and I have talked about this before, where if, if you, that flat seal should be a hard dependency of Flatpak itself. When you install yeah, Flatpak, definitely. you should you should get Flat Seal installed by default. You shouldn't have to go search that out because the vast majority of people aren't going to know that it exists. It's one of the reasons why Plasma is so good in that is that they've basically included Flat Seal inside of the KDE settings Flat because Pack KCM, yep. Because they basically, I mean, because that's exactly what Plasma needed was more settings in their panel. I mean, but why the hell not? You know. Um. So so my <laughs> argument against Flatpak it, it has it, one though. It has it has. That, that, that's got it in its settings. If you go to the settings and you go to apps, it shows the Flatpak apps and it shows what permissions they have. Things like, them, for example, that must be boxes and that, stuff like that you can. That must be new because I had never seen it before. But I, I trust Sean. Oh, yeah, it's in recent versions. Okay, it's, it's been it's been a few months since I've used you know, I and mean, it wasn't there for me. But that's beside the beside the point. It's it's still that's still something you have to. It's better than nothing at all. But for me personally, when they talk about security and permissions and stuff like that, that has to be something that it has to be very explicit. So on iPhone, on Android, which is what those things are trying to emulate in an immutable container that contains stuff. That's what basically every iOS and Android application is, is that, you know, it's a container. And then in order to get permissions to do things outside of its container... It has to ask for permission, not only from the operating system itself, but from the user. And as we've gotten to more advanced mobile operating systems, those controls have gotten more powerful. Now, they don't, the controls are usually buried like they are in Linux, but there's always this pop up that basically runs every time you install an application that says, this is what, these are the things that it has. And I was listening to the guy. One of the, the the chief developers of Flatpaks, and they talk they talk he's talk he talked about this about a year ago. How this is their dream, where every application kind of has to have a standard way of presenting the things that it has access to, like right upon it the first run, and very similar to the, what Android does. And they just, just like Android does, yeah. They just it hasn't got there yet, and because because of the way th things are, inst implementing that on Android where Google has 100% control of what's in the Play Store is easy because if you don't have it, you don't get in. That's the way it works, right? On I something was, like I was thinking of something like, um, let's say the iOS way, where where, it, where if an app says, "Hey, can I can I please access the microphone?" you get an alert. I was thinking that Linux should have something like this, where let's say you have enough permissions to start off with to I don't know play audio. Send things to to for accessibility. Display things on the screen, and then if you want to access the microphone or you want access a, a USB device, you could have like a portal that goes, "Hey, this application is trying to access th this device. Do you want to allow it?" And you and if if, if 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 you press yes, it just saves it in the flatback permissions, and you can just directly okay. change them like that. But there's an argument against that is because there's uh, the reason why it's not happening is because there's so many different ways to distribute flat packs. You got GUI stores, you got the terminal, you got other GUI apps, you got TUI apps. Well, uh, the, and, and, sorry, Steve, the, the, and, and Flathub isn't the be all end all of, uh, it's not like snaps where the, if you want to snap, you're getting it from the Snapcraft store. That's the only place you're getting a snap from, basically. Yeah. Where Flatpak, yeah. anybody can distribute their Flatpak. It doesn't have to be on Flathub. And, and therefore, it's, it'd be much harder for a standard to be implemented. Now, the vast majority of them are on Flathub. And, and the Flathub guys could say, if you want to be on Flathub, you have to do it this way. Uh, and, yeah. and, and whatever. But here, here's the thing. It is the way... <laughs> Unfortunately, the way Linux has evolved, and this goes back to what we were talking about earlier, it is that 
everyone is doing it in a slightly different way. So if you use GNOME, they actually already have this feature, specifically when it comes to device usage like microphones and cameras. Only they don't really ask you for permission, but they do show you that they're in use. So there's like an icon that shows up in the bar that says, hey, you're right. Right. And you, that's great features. I, I think that they could take it to the point where it asks you for permission very easily mm -hmm. if that's something that they wanted to do. Yeah. And I, th I think that KD, that Plasma does it as well, uh, shows you that the microphone or the camera is in use. It show, it, it, yeah. In the system tray, it will say microphone, and, and it'll list the apps that are using the microphone. At least I'm not sure how, how visually it shows it on the icon. But if I go to the system tray with Orca, it will say microphone push button, and then it will give you a list of apps and say, are you using the microphone? And it just it's quite nice to know that which apps are using this, my devices at all times. Yeah. Yeah, and speaking, Let's sorry, uh, 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 and speaking of uh, KDE having a, a flatback permission in their uh, settings, I will have you know that it's not a depend depend dependency of anything. So it's up to the user to install it or not. So uh, they haven't uh, even on Plasma Six because I'm testing Plasma Six in Proxmox. Uh, I installed uh, Arch with KDE with the default K Pro KDE profile. It doesn't it doesn't come bundled in because it's not a dependency of anything. Well, it then is, it's in Plasma Meta. Wait, and, and that, that's not that's another thing is that every distro does things and includes things a little bit differently. So when you install Plasma on Manjaro, they have their own, basically their own version of Plasma that they're using. Not yeah. only not only do you have to worry about depend, not de you have to worry about versioning. So like if you're gonna install Debian, you're gonna get an older version of Plasma. So you might not have the features. And, and then you, you know, you're on Arch, they're gonna have like the most vanilla version of Plasma available and you're gonna be in control of what's downloaded. OpenSUSE is gonna have their own way of doing things. And, and every, everything that you know it's just so many it, it's so hard i think for us to come up with a way to do things and then have everybody follow it because there's no it's, way there's just no way that everybody's going to agree on the way to do things and unfortunately when it comes to privacy and security and stuff like that you can't have 12 different ways of doing it and have it be good you just you can't I mean, you could that, have, theoretically you could have probably like two and it'd be okay, but everyone like my argument against flat packs is that they they've tr they have this way uh, uh, that it seems like the way that they want to go is something similar to Android and in, in iOS, and I think that that would be good, but the way they've done it right now, the way it's implemented right now, is they have basically first off they have the developers can enable whatever permissions they want. So they, and they don't have to really, they may give you a warning in the terminal. I don't know. I've never actually seen that, but I, most people aren't going to install it that way. But if you, you, you know, you can, they can have access to the home directory. They can have access to the devices, whatever they want. They can turn that stuff on during install without ever asking for permission. Now you can go yeah. turn that stuff off. Um, but the, my other thing about Flapkick is, is that for the rest of the permissions, it's all buried somewhere else. It, it's iOS does this really stupid thing where it puts all and Plasma does this too. Actually, it puts all the settings for everything in the settings application, which you know I suppose in one way of thinking about it makes sense. But when I want to change a, a camera setting on iOS, I can't change the setting from the camera app. I have to hop out of the camera app, go to the settings application, search for camera, go to the setting. It's stupid. It's the same thing with this flat pack thing. Is if I want to change a permission for OBS or whatever, I can't do that. From OBS, I have to go to Flat Seal, enable the permission that I want it to have, close OBS, relaunch OBS in order for it to actually have access to that permission. That's just, that's, nobody's ever going to manage the permissions that way. And it's not a no. good system because it, if, if I have to leave the application in order for it to have the permissions that I want it to have, that's not good. I don't want to have to do that. I want to have to, I want to be able to, to, it, it, it's uh, it's another thing it's kind of like with the por a portal problem that i'm having right now i in order to get my screen to record on wayland I, on one monitor does the other two monitors fine but i have to ki i have to restart the portal every time i open up obs it's stupid and in order to get it to do i also also after i have to restart the portal i have to close obs and restart obs in order for it to actually work if you okay, have so a count okay go on 
If you have a situation where you have to close the application in order for something to take effect, it's not a good system. It's just it's just not. So, wow. Yeah, so one, one of the Fraggle. one of the bigger underlying things with this too, though, is um, is like actual just literal user permissions and user groups. Like if you're not in the audio group, good luck turning on or off the microphone. Like you know, at, at an application level or a user level or a system level. Like if, if you're imagine, not in that or, group, then good luck. Yeah, right. And imagine being <laughs> you know? on a live uh, on a live session uh, doing a live podcast, and you want to show something on a monitor and you have to restart portals and close obs reopen obs lose uh, the connection with uh, youtube and stuff like that that's this is this is where where flatback fall, fall falls on its face yes everything has flaws but uh, i in my opinion and that's my own private opinion from using i have 60 flatbacks and they're still growing uh, because again arch Without, without telling anyone, decides to change to, to delete some of the dependencies, put them on the move them to the AUR, uh, thus ending up with a broken package and stuff like that. That will never happen with OBS, uh, with uh, with flatbacks. So uh, yes, flatbacks are good, and yes, flatbacks have a lot of issues yet to be solved. But to me, in my use case. Ever since I opted to use more flat packs over uh, over regular packages, I will tell you this: I am so damn bored that my system is stable on Arch that I went and played around. I had to go play around with Nix. <laughs> okay. To counter Matt's point, I was I was, was going to this about like being able to change the flat pack stuff within within the the application itself. That's kind of defeating the whole sandbox and all container because if the app can go, I want to access this, I want to access that, I'm going to break out of the container now. Oh, home directory, let's, let's nuke this away. That's not security. So, this is the only way I would see to, that you'd have this thing where you can change the permissions from within the app itself is again, if you have this external thing that asks, <coughs> do you want to give this thing the permission that it's requesting? Like a little pop up. Well, I mean, okay, so. I want to see like a first time wizard, you know, wow. like a like a pop up when you first run the app that says, "Hey, these are the permissions I'm asking for," and like toggle switches of what do you want to yeah. give it on that first launch, and then have it apply. It's, so then, when the app to, that first time, it's similar to like Matt said to Android or yeah. and iOS, where you can temporarily give access to the app while using, well, this, and once yeah. the app is closed. It no longer has access. The solution, so I, I think, because 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 you, you're right that ha having each application responsible for giving itself at permission to do things it is not only a recipe for you know insecurity but also being different in every application because every application is going to design it differently. Everything is they're going to ask it differently. They're going to ask in different situations. So that's probably not mm -hmm. going to do. But we have actually do have a, a good solution for this. And we have because it's portals. Portals is mm -hmm. the solution. It runs it, it runs outside of the application. So it's going to be universal across everything as long as everything uses the portal. And it al it allows communication between different things, so it can allow act it can allow communication between the application and the system. So it's going to be able to ex escape the container in that in that way, a and it it could in theory at least be designed to the point where it look it basically look every time when you open up a application, the portal would recognize that you're opening up for the first time and ask what permission you'd want to do. You give the permissions, then it could save those permissions and it would just run on as you would you'd want it to run. You can change them later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that but, that'll be a good system. But I don't. Yeah. The, the problem with that first off. We're not there yet, but it's also not the directions that Portal's going. Portal's is is the, the way Portal's is going is a desktop centric way of going things. Like KDE has their own, GNOME has their own, Hyperland has their own, all this stuff, right? Then it's not individual. It's the, yeah, they're not using. It's not an individual use type thing. Like where you know, it's not the global key bindings. It's not going to be permissions. It's, you're not going to have a permissions portal and a key bind portal and all this stuff. You're going to have a Wayland portal or a Hyperland portal, WL Roots portal. And those things are going to have to coalesce around the other things. And if each of the portals has to implement this thing, it's just never going to happen because they all 
would have to do it in the same way. And they're not all going to do it in the same way because we know that they're not going to do it in the same way. That's just, that's the way things work, right? So in order for, I think for the, this idea to work, you really truly have to have something of a standard in order for it to, to happen. And unfortunately, I, it, it, I think that the way Flatpak has done it is kind of is their recognition that you can't have a standard, but if you do, if you don't control it yourself, so they have their 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 idea of a standard is flat seal. That that's how they 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 recognize that they don't have the the opportunity to have to have access to every application upon boot, so they have an application that controls the permissions outside of any control of the developers of the application. So they control all the permissions. You just go there. The And I suppose that's a good compromise in a way because it does allow for permissions to be set in some fashion and it exists, but it's not, it's not as front and center and promoted as it needs to be. It needs to be something It needs to come installed with everything that uses Flatpak, they need to talk to um, Gnome and, and KDE to the point where they didn't go bury it in a settings panel where, you know, half the people don't know where it actually, actually exists. And, and and I think that that's, that's the issue is that with Android and iOS, you know those permissions things exist because everybody sees them. You get... Most people have probably seen, even if even if you're a little younger, you probably remember back with Windows Vista and, Win, and Windows 7... Oh God. Windows instituted the this thing where every time you needed it needed access to something with administrator privileges, Here's it popped control, up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, good like good over God. and over oh, and over, over again, right? Oh my God, it was horrible. This, yes, Vista RPM was so and, fucking. And it's, decent, it's gotten a lot better in Windows 11. Yeah, they they they've toned it down a lot. It used yeah. to be way way worse. Just set it to zero. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Never too far. <laughs> the, 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 so the thing is, it's like like Android and iOS. Like when iOS, I think like fifteen or whatever came out, it, Apple did something very, very similar because they that was like the first time they instituted that very privacy thing that pissed yeah, Facebook yeah. off, right? And, and the, the it was popping up yep. all the time. They again they've toned it down, and I, I think that. And I, I hate to say this, but Lin the Flatpak guys need something like that, but not obviously to that extent, where it pops up so people know about it. Like either during the install of these distributions or during the first launch of the software s store or whatever, you are alerted to the fact that you can control permissions. A lot of people, I would bet, first off, they don't know what flat packs and snaps are. They just want the applications. Most normal people aren't coming into a Linux user group and having an argument over flat packs versus snaps. I wish they were. That'd be freaking awesome. But most people aren't. But they just go to the thing, go to the store, get their applications, and then they use it. They they need to be told that they have the permissions, they have the control of the permissions. And right now. That's not front and center. It's buried in settings applications. It's buried in, in flat seal. And if your security settings are buried, they don't exist. It doesn't matter if they do exist. If nobody knows about yeah. them, nobody's using them. Yeah. Like, for example, like for example, I watched a YouTube video of one of my uh, my friends. Uh, he was uh, advertising. Uh, the challenge of the, for this month is using Pop! OS with Cosmic. Uh, he installed, He went to the store. He uh, he wanted to install Steam, and the the Pop Shop offered two versions: the Pop Shop version or the Flatpak version. So he selected the uh, the Pop Shop version, thinking that it's going to give him the deb, the Debian file, uh, the deb file, but no. So uh, the Pop Shop was the Flatpak. and well, after he installed it, and he uh, he wanted to. Uh, point steam to to his uh, game drive he he found out that he didn't have access to it he went to the uh, he went to the pop shop again to make sure he installed the right one it's the right one but it's a flatback so for whatever reason uh, the pop shop is forcing flat flat packs on everyone without without them looking that's a good example of people installing without looking and or knowing well the the pop shop is just a, a fork of the elementary store so I'm not yeah. surprised that it's a, a flat pack only thing because that's what the elementary store is, is, is flat pack only. So, right. Yeah. So, what that's another say, example. What did you say, Jajunk? 
I don't think that's right. What is he? What was he trying to? I'm sorry, I'm Steam. multitasking. What was he trying to download? Steam. 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 He installed Steam. Steam. He selected the pop shop from the drop down. It installed the flatback for whatever reason. Okay, it could be so... a bug in the. It could be a bug in the pop shop. I don't know, but that's okay. what happened so, to him on video. It right. probably is because I just set oh. this system up yesterday, and it gave me the dev version when I did the pop shop version. Right. So, okay. well, see, I don't know if this is like different because I'm on Cosmic right now. I'm on this laptop, and I put in Steam, and in, a, in the shop, and right there, there's a little Steam logo, and then right next to it, there's the drop down. Hmm. And it says yeah. flat hub, flat pack, and then that's the first option. And then you click on the little drop down, and then the next option is the Pop OS dev. Mm. It's a dev. Yeah, option. that's what he selected, but for whatever reason, it installed the flat hub. Maybe just a version. bug then. Uh, yeah. I'm going to download. I'm going to download Steam, and we're going to see what happens. I did have that <laughs> happen once installing Discord. It did oh, happen because it's, yeah, it's like it didn't flip over, and I clicked too fast, and maybe it. Got the flat pack before I selected the deb or something like that. I, I oh, okay. That, from, that could be that. I was watching it this morning. I was watching it this morning, and he was like, "What is this? This is a deal breaker. I don't want to use Pop OS anymore." <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I I have my I'm using uh, Cosmic on this or Pop OS on this machine right now. Um, I I don't mind it. It is, I mean, it's cool, um, but. I here's, don't like that it's on Ubuntu, but it it's not. Uh, it's just gnome with some shit on top of it. When they actually yeah. put out, when they put out the Rust, when that's that's live. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. To, to call yeah, Rust I'm gonna, yeah, I'll check that one out. Um, I've been following them and looking at the repos and stuff. I, I don't know. I'll see. I think it's pretty cool. I want to put uh, uh, Cosmic on top of Fedora. That's actually where I would like to live, but. That even really is. <laughs> that isn't even really true because because GNOME's not my thing. I'm kind of a KDE guy. My actual yeah. work work machine is KDE on Fedora. That's why. Yeah. I, so I, I, I was uh, I was going to say right, distro uh, box. Uh, <laughs> distro <laughs> box. Nah. You can do that. You yeah. can. I, I run GNOME in well, I mean, before. Nah, <laughs> not no distro box. No blend OS. I just. Nah. No, I I I was going to say. Uh, I saw the package for Cosmic on uh, on the AUR, but they haven't updated it for ages. So uh, I'm hoping it will come to Arch at some point in the future because I I want to use something other than KDE for a while, but I have tried everything else. The, the, uh, if, they're, if what they're saying is true, because... Uh, there's the uh, from the interview with the, that uh, Brody had with the CEO of uh, System76. Uh, they're targeting customization, <clears throat> super customization. I think, yeah, I think it will it's come to Next, Arch too. and NixOS because, well, the NixOS guys already have the Cosmic apps in the unstable version, and the AUR. Well, no, they, they someone... have the packages, but they have the meta packages, but uh, they just there for as a placeholder. They don't actually point to anything yet, but it's just telling us that it might come to Arch. That's not a hundred percent, but hey, it's there. <laughs> I, I, I if you wanted so. to try something right now, you, um, the Pop guys publish every single extension that they use in the GNOME extension. Um, website, so you could go download all the extensions, implement them yourself yep. if you wanted to. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, yeah, I it, did that on. Uh, I got my father-in-law on um, a GNOME desktop, and I went. I just borrowed his laptop for a minute, and then went and did all that and put it on top. I mean, it was like didn't take hope... very long. And it, yeah, it looks. I mean, it's not the same. There's not everything there, but I think there's 99 percent of it. And yeah, you can make GNOME or GNOME GNOME. You can make GNOME Cosmic in 30 minutes. Yeah, but I hope. I hope what. The, what the CEO said is going to be true is like they're not implementing their extensions as extensions. They're, the essential ones are going to be part of the core OS. Yeah. So you you either enable them or disable them, and some of them are going to be uh, are going to be just called applets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. instead, yeah instead of, of extensions, extensions yeah, instead of extensions, it's going to be applets. I think that's their their best foot. Uh, yeah, and I'm liking I'm liking a lot. 
I'm liking a lot. How Mint handled or Cinnamon handles things, right? They got applets to extend the desktop in different ways. Yep. Awesome. I yeah, like it. We, for those of you playing the bingo, Cinnamon has now been uh, mentioned. We have we've gotten Emacs and we had Ed earlier, which is interesting. Uh, uh, so oh, I forgot to say Linux Mint, Matt. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kernel's too old. Just, uh, Kernel's too old. There too we old. go. That's one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, we, we need Jake in here. Revisit, um, we need Jake in here so he can mention the TKG kernel. <laughs> oh, hey, 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 hey. If, if Jake is not here to talk about the TKG kernel, I am. Right, I'm up for talking about right, the TKG kernel. I used kernel. it on Arch, and day to day, what does it give you? I didn't notice any any anything different about it. I'll tell you what it gives you. I, I'll tell you what it uh, what it gives you. Uh, because I'm good friends with, uh, with TK Glitch, uh, the the creator uh but uh it gives you because here's the thing when nvidia pushes their drivers uh for example because they they work on the nvidia uh, nvidia drivers as well uh, when uh, uh, nvidia pushes their drivers upstream and they push it so everyone makes it available in their package uh, manager uh there's a lot of there's a lot of patches that are left on the table not being used in those drivers and uh, tk glitch works with valve directly uh, just like glorious agro um he's one of the valve contributors uh so uh, he takes those patches that are left on the table and they implement them uh in in their drivers that's where their kernel comes into play because those drivers don't play good without having their kernel as well uh, to, uh, combined with it. And once you have those two combined, like I, uh, my friend uh, Air Max, uh, who makes videos and uh, benchmarking and everything, he's got a top of the line system I, I dream of. He's got a 4090 and he's got like 270 hertz displays uh and a 79 and a 79 uh, 7900x whatever is a, a ryzen cpu uh or 5950x sorry 5950x uh he bench he spends his days benchmarking games and when he installed the the, the tkg drive nvidia drivers plus tkg kernel he had a 25 percent uh boost in every single game he played. That was a lot of when, words, Steve, to for saying so that, might. that it, you know, is faster. I mean, he could just said it's faster. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, more faster. Um, <laughs> yeah, more more faster and more more stable for, for gamers. But if you're not a gamer, it's not going to give you anything. You're Cust not going to Custom gaming kernels are such a fad though in my opinion because we we've we've had these things before. We we had the 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 Zen kernel yeah. there for a while was a was the That's hot correct. shit, and Liquorix is is around. Yeah, and but TKG. The, the difference with TKG, is that, the difference is with TKG is, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember Zen mod. Yep. Yeah, yeah, but Zen mod is better for Debian Debian systems. But still, uh, TKG is the advantage you get with TKG is because he works with Valve directly. Okay, I mean that's that's great, but it's also uh, another thing is that you have to rely on that one person who's doing that kernel to be around yeah. for the rest of eternity, you know. And yeah, it just that's it's just we we've learned over and over again that people who do their own version of the kernel just they don't stick around for very long because it's hard freaking work to to constantly have to compile and put all the stuff that you have to do in, into that kernel, and eventually. The TKG guy is just gonna say he doesn't want to do it anymore, and then all the people who are uh -oh. using the TKG kernel not gonna be able to use the TKG kernel. So here's the, here's the ultimate solution: use Gen two, because then you can do it yourself. Yep. <laughs> you know that? No, that, no, that? no, no, no. The ultimate solution is to wait until is to wait until May said twenty four point one, because then you get NVK. <laughs> and no, then uh, then they work well, on, that... then they work on the performance, and then once that gets good, no one's gonna use driver anymore except for CUDA. Yeah. That's true, but uh, when Matt said uh, we cannot rely on them sticking around for very long, I, I, in my head uh, it was it was like, look at Zero Linux, didn't last long, did it? Yeah. <laughs> right, but like you could still use Zero Linux after Zero Linux stopped being a distro, right? Because it's still yeah. Arch, like 
yeah. If yeah. TKG yeah. kernel disappears, like you just stop getting kernel updates. So you're gonna have to that's change bad. to a different kernel. Yeah, that's gonna yeah. be bad. So if if the guy that's uh, maintaining or creating like the TKG kernel is working closely with Valve, I mean they may adopt it or adapt it internally as well. Uh, especially like with the advent of um, the the Steam Deck coming out and stuff like that, like there's mm-hmm. ways for it to uh, move laterally um, into like some sort of internal development um, or yeah. become like part a part of the process for a development team. He was right? he was asked about so, that in, the, in he was asked about that during the interview that Air Max did with him uh, for the kernel, yes, but for the Nvidia drivers, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for, like, uh, like Valve, for, Valve. for system to well, so with system seventy six and the Steam Deck and everything like that, like at some point Nvidia is going to cave. At some point, game developers are going to cave. Like they yeah. have to realize by this point that if they're developing, even for for Linux for native Linux games, like just because we run uh, FOSS software and operating systems and stuff like that doesn't mean we're opposed to actually purchasing a game that functions well on our systems and that yeah. we enjoy. And, well, I think and in like, terms, yeah. I think in terms of games, what's going to end up happening is that when because. At CES, someone, I think it was maybe Ioneo or one of, one of the ones that make consoles, they actually announced a new SteamOS console beyond outside of the Steam Deck. So I think as more stuff like that happens, like more hardware vendors actually start using SteamOS, I think that's when the game mm-hmm. developers will uh, truly well, take it. Uh, sorry to, sorry to, ba- to, bash your, uh, to, to bash that, but that Ioneo... Uh, uh, I forgot which one it was go- going to be, but it's Aya they decided they, they decided they against shipping, uh, shipping uh, SteamOS or uh, whatever it was called, uh, the distribution on it by default, they're going to ship Windows. They changed they their mind. Well, yeah, there's another one that was going to ship Manjaro. No, <laughs> don't ship that! No. <laughs> oh. I know, I had the same thought. Don't I'm like, that bro. Shit. <laughs> Two years ago, Speaking of Manjaro, today today uh, is day number twelve hundred of me running Manjaro on my HTPC. Nobody I've cares, been running Steve. Manjaro on my HTPC for twelve hundred days. They should put that in a museum. That's like unheard of. Yeah, yeah. twelve hundred days. Yeah. Is that yeah. the one you yeah. have with the Manjaro? Yeah. 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 What? Yeah, twelve hundred days, and all I oh, run God. on it, uh, I, all I installed on it were huh. two applications: Plex server and uh, filebot filebot is a is an application that uh, allows you to rename your tv shows and uh, movies in for, uh, by connecting to imdb and different services to 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 name them correctly so plex understands which movie it is because some movies are the same name as older movies so they know exactly which movie it is so plex knows which movie it is so i use that and that used to, that is free on windows Yet cost forty eight dollars on Linux for whatever reason. That's so bad. I mean, if it's worth it, oh. it's worth it because I've been using it for the past what six seven years, and yeah. uh, it's the only application, and it's built with Java. Uh, it's a Java based <gasps> application, uh, but it's it, it it works, and I don't have to think about it twice. I just drag uh, the movie on it, click. Uh, the service I wanted to to to, uh, to scrape from, and it will scrape from uh, from there, and it will rename the movie. Done. I drag the movie, put it where it should supposed to be. Done deal. Plex will pick it right up. So yeah, it has nothing to do with Manjaro uh, though. By the way, you no, know, but I'm saying yeah. Manjaro is stable because I only uh, because I only Next have two stable. applications. <laughs> because I only have two applications. <laughs> if you have anything more and you start using the AUR, yeah, you then could you're put them in a configuration file and just paste it on a different system and go. Nix hey, has a wait, 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 hold on a second. Nix has a configuration file. How did I not know this? No. <laughs> <laughs> if I show you my configuration file after two days of using Nix OS, you're gonna say, What the hell is this? Mine is I have very, over very six hundred packages in there. I have six hundred. Six hundred. What do yeah. you what? what for? It's 600. <laughs> did, did it take you five hours to literally just go to, down to environment.system package equals and just start writing them out there? What, why and then you... go down to somewhere else. Programs.blah.enable equals true. A whole like f- f- 200 lines of that. 
Why is that what you did? <laughs> uh, more likely, he looks what? like he, ca- he catted out every package that's on the Nick store right into his configuration <laughs> file. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're yeah. partially That's correct. 100,000 packages actually in, in the next store, no. so that, that's more than 600. <laughs> no, but it's still going. Part, Matt, is, Matt is partially correct. I catted out all the packages I have installed on my Arch system and found alternatives on the NixOS store and I pasted mm. them in. Oh, that sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> Someone's going to bring your config and hate you for life. <laughs> well, so far it's working. So far it's working, uh, but I discovered much to my dismay they're shipping a broken version, uh, an old version of SDDM uh, because if you enable no, auto login and uh, if you combine auto login with uh, plasma Wayland session, black oh, screen. That's, that's not that's not um, that's not an SDDM issue. Um, SDDM. What what's happening is the service. Uh, the way Nick, Nick's configures the service is that basically it's starting too soon. If you don't have auto login, it starts fine. But if you have auto login yeah, yeah. enabled, SDDM will start too soon. Then TTY1 spawns on top of it. There's a config option to stop that, but I need to go and find it again and pick. Oh, if you can, if you can, if you can DM me on. Yeah, if you can DM me on Matt's server, that'll be great because I need to. What's your username on on that? Dark Zero. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll find the issue because because someone brought up with GDM because it did the exact same thing. It's something to do with TTY1 and things spawning too quickly. That there's an option uh, okay. to do. I'll find it and send it to you at some point today. Yeah, okay. Because I enabled auto because I only use auto logging because nobody else uses the computer except me. As soon as I enable Plasma Wayland, it stopped working. If you select X11, it works just fine. Anybody else mm-hmm. have a problem with using auto logging? Because I've never used it. I'm physically opposed to uh, anything auto logging. There's only in. one reason I use auto logging. I also don't use auto logging. I've got encrypted LVM. Yeah, so I've used auto login before. So, so, so you, so you type, so you type your password in just before everybody else. Is what you're saying is you're early. Uh, uh, I, I suppose that that would make sense, but I don't use, I don't encrypt my hard drive, which I probably should. But the, I created, I created a password for a reason. It may not be very secure, but I want to use that password every time. It is just to, to have the in in my mind. You can that set I, your encryption password. No, I, I hate like, doing that. Login do things. Yeah. That's what, that's what I do. I have, I, have a, I have an encryption password. I type it in, and then what then happens is that it, I, I, only t- I only type one password because I have auto login, although I need to fix it on next. But when I was on Arch, I, I would type in my, my password, all my drives would be sorted out and decrypted, and then it would, then it would just start SDDM and, lock and, do, and do that. Well, uh, I, hate, I, I love auto login because ever since. Uh, I start. Uh, I started using a computer. I would set. I would set auto login to true even on Windows because I hate to type my password uh, on login. I just li- I turn on my computer. I I would expect it to be on the desktop. I, I don't expect it to ask me for, for a password to log in to the desktop. <laughs> I have a so, yeah, I go into TTY and manually launch my display <laughs> stuff. Like because some sessions I I just don't use anything GUI, like I just don't. So I have it set so that every time that Hyperland goes to sleep and I come back on, I have to type my password. <laughs> every time. <laughs> uh, like, I want like, I'm... Nobody's going to use my computer either, and if they tried, they'd be very, very fucking confused, but I still want the password there just to know that, you know, nobody's going to get to my porn stash without me knowing about it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we've said it, you're, you're, we're just letting loose with it now, because... <laughs> Well, I, we're already, we, we've been demonetized <laughs> for an hour and a half. Use DTK lock. That's what I do. Say, if I'm swear, use DTK lock. <laughs> I blame Steve. Once again, I'm blaming Steve. <laughs> uh, all right. It's so called, it's, it's called Dark Zero you. for a reason. Yeah, yeah. It's really good to get Dark for a reason. <laughs> Zipper remove Steve. <laughs> <laughs> By the time they did that, it'd be really, it's very slow. So <laughs> that's true. It'd take ten years to remove. No, oh, hey, you know, actually, when you remove stuff, it doesn't have to hit the mirrors, so it's actually fairly fast. But if we were to install something, it would it'd be slow. Um, it's but true. I, actually, someone pointed me towards something the other day after I made that video 
that I installed that replaced Mirror Sorcerer and it actually sped things up. So it sped it sped things up. <laughs> the funny thing is, so the day after I installed that, there was a uh, a glib. It was I think it was Glibc that had that zero day. And there was like four thousand package updates on OpenSUSE that day. And norm normal, <laughs> yeah, oh. normally that take about two hours is how long it took. But after I installed the thing, were they so, all related to that security flaw though? When they when that that seems like a lot. When OpenSUSE and yeah. updates clips, it, it pushes everything. Like it literally puts puts wow. updates everything. Um, so it took thirty nine minutes. So that was that. I mean, oh, bad. everyone says like, "Oh my God, thirty nine minutes!" When, but when you consider what used to be two thousand two hours, thirty nine minutes is actually really really fast. Plus, <laughs> that included sixty three flat pack updates, and flat pack is notoriously like slow for two. updating. So, <laughs> yeah, is good. quicker than Gen two. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, if I understood that correctly, it was funny that glibc issue is only with the newer version of glibc, and because I still run an Ubuntu LTS over here. Or, Pop or mint or whatever, I didn't actually have to deal with that. Yeah, I because I think it was only 0.36 and 0.37 that were affected. It wasn't even 0.38 yep. or 0.39. It was literally just those two. So if you're running an LTS right now, you didn't really see anything. But if you're running anything else, like my laptop with with tumbleweed on it, was just like holy crap! I got all these updates now. I left it sit mm -hmm. for like an hour and a half to get through everything because I hadn't been updating it for like the last two weeks. <laughs> well, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that on the rolling. Don't do that. <laughs> it had two packages. It asked me a question on, and it says, "Do you want to overwrite this package with this package from the main repo?" And I was like, "Sure, why not? What's the worst that can happen?" <laughs> <laughs> well, we were talking about SDDM. I just ran an update on my Arch system. There's an uh, there's an SDDM update. Hey, Yay! Steve turned into that guy from the Eiffel Tower sixty five Eiffel Eiffel sixty five video. He's gonna get blue abadi abadi. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, I, 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 I love listening to that song. It's actually quite decent, but it, I mean, that's just my opinion. Like from the, <laughs> that's from like the early 2000s. Like half the people here probably weren't even born. <laughs> I, 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 oh, yeah, I mean, we listened um, to that song over and over and over again. Yeah. yeah I'll, did that on a band trip to Columbus, Ohio one time over and over again. Um, <laughs> by, um, by the way, Matt, do you want to hear some good news? Sure. I always want good news. Uh, if all goes well, according to plan, uh, I'll be making it to the States this summer. Awesome. That's cool. That is good news. Yeah. That'll be fine. Um, time for me to book a vacation to anywhere else. I'm just... <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Say um, twenty minutes later, he's on Matt's doorstep. <laughs> I, I mean, that's weird because I was going to Lebanon this summer. <laughs> We're just going to switch places. Um, <laughs> that no, it's just um, Airbnb each other's places, right? <laughs> <laughs> Matt be like, "Why is the power out?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that was a, that. He took the general. <laughs> <laughs> Why is the power on? How are you going to do my podcast? It's <laughs> oh, horrible. Um, I have no idea what we're talking about. I've completely lost it. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's go ahead then and talk a little bit about the next one because we're, we're coming up on two hours here, and that's usually where 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 I hop out. So we will. I have a few ideas. This one here was kind of app focused, and. I know that there was a couple, let me, uh, uh, Judge Inc., I think you put a couple ideas in the, my server is such a mess, um, in, in the podcast yeah. notes for, for the lug. So we have one here about home labs and one about uh, how the Linux community interacts with the wider CS community. CS, what, your, your, your abbreviation. Computer science. Computer science. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've seen that one. All right. Uh, if there's something we can do as Linux enthusiasts to welcome more people into the fold, uh, so we, that's kind of like a community thing. We have that one. Home lab. Home lab. Home lab. Home lab. Just always, always advocate that Linux is the answer. That's it. I think Linux, what would be cool. It's always the answer. I think what yeah. would be cool is um, see you, you see some you see these people who share like all these like little tips and tricks. I think what we, what we should have is like as many people as you can give tips and tricks on just how to make Linux better and what things you probably shouldn't do to make it better. And if there are any, any better things that like 
you can do that have already been suggested that are like better than the things that have been suggested to make Linux just easier to use, nicer to work with. Because I've got, I've got a few of those. That could be fun. What, yeah. what, what y'all think about that? Yeah. That'd or, be fun. Uh, yeah? I'm still yeah. home labs. Um, we'll, we'll, don't, <laughs> we'll get to the home lab one. We'll definitely do that one. Uh, I want to actually have a home lab when we talk about it, though. Um, I, I'm uh, creating one, <laughs> by the way. I mean, I could always share my Jank home I lab. Mean, if you want to share a quick home lab tip, I mean, that's fine. You know, but just don't go all once, on the home lab. Once you once you get people start talking about home labs, like they won't. They're not going to stop talking about home. They're labs. not going to stop. It's, it's hey, Arch. Distrobox, it's, document, it's, no, it's, 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 it's Arch, it's Arch Linux and Nix, and then hardware. They won't stop once you start that. They won't stop. But I figure home labs are a huge thing in the community, so I assume. I mean, I I would have already assumed that Matt had one running. I don't because I don't electricity here is really fucking expensive and I'm very worried mm -hmm. about, you know, having a $500 uh, electricity bill. So I've, I've been very worried uh, of it. But we don't have the servers going. Who's he, yeah, right. Who's that, who's yeah, that guy? Servers, you know, he, who's that guy? He's got a he's got a YouTube channel uh switching to Linux or something. He runs his Switch He's like two, he's like oh, touring yeah. he's like touring the I, mean, I don't watch him, but he's got this he's touring the uh Oh yeah. New Mexico or something, he's running everything off of batteries and a Raspberry Pi. He's got mm -hmm. his streaming deck all yeah. set up in there. Like you can, you can get a home server, run it off a of Raspberry Pi, and cost you like ten cents a month. Yeah, yeah maybe well, I just you use, no, you're in, like you're in, in about micro. Is freaking, yeah, you're uh, in Michigan. You're in Michigan, right? So maybe the prices are crazy. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. A, I don't home know. Lab, a home lab is not ideal for a person like me who don't got no electricity three quarters of the day. We only get it for one quarter of the day. I am going to send you the link to the Linux switching to Linux guy because he literally is running everything off of Raspberry Pis and batteries. And yeah, so I, have a, Raspberry, another... I have a Raspberry Pi, but my problem is not where I'm hosting things, is the fucking uh, router and the and, internet. And, so hence, should... hence the batteries. He's got a whole, he's running it, I'm telling you, he's running it out of a van. Yeah, he's got solar. Yeah, he's got the big batteries, uh, the he, ones that Linus advertises. Right. I was going to say, Steve, what, what about Starlink yeah. and solar? You, you, you'd you have well, power we, and we internet. Have to, we have to, uh, uh, solar is all over the place, except this house is a rental. And the owner of this house, he's like, you want to put solar panels? No. Uh, you can hang them out your window. The wheel. You don't even have to bolt them to a wall. <laughs> or anything. Yeah, I'm just it, 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 it can be, 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 be non-intrusive, non-abrasive. Uh, I, I got I got to hop off too. But so next next one, that's the one at the end of the month. That's going to be about uh, the community. Well, I think what we'll do is the the Linux tips one, where you, like uh, yes. Linux tip and, and getting every like, how to improve Linux and stuff like that. We'll do that one, and then after that one, we'll do, we'll talk about home labs, uh, which will be the a month from t you know today. And then, and then we'll, we'll hopefully it's we'll, going to be at this time, not uh, afternoon. Well, I'll be snoring. Well, the, all the, all the times are exactly the same. So the first the first one of the month is always at eleven fifteen Eastern. The second one is always at eight fifteen Eastern on the fourth Friday. Um, so the home lab eight, is the eight fifteen or the nine. One at nine. Well, it, it, it's eight fifteen Eastern time is what it's supposed to say. For whatever reason, Discord keeps fucking with the time. Is so that it's supposed to, PM. It's Eastern PM. The, the, the second oh, one's... That's, 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 that's 1 a.m. for me. Oh, that's 1 a.m. for me. Uh, come on, man. Oh, well. you, you can sleep still be here. I'll, 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 I'll try it at 1 a.m. Stuff it. <laughs> sleep is... Well, well, 1 a.m. For, for you. 1 a.m. for you. It's like 4 a.m. for me. Uh, <laughs> I, I I did an early one and, and a late one so I could catch as many people on as many times as Way possible. Yeah. So... Um, anyways, that's what we'll plan on doing. Uh, I think it'll be fun, and then I, I yeah, think I'm down I, for that. I think the next one we will stream uh, if, if I get my act together. This time I just recorded and I'll post it. Um, but the next one we'll stream and we'll try not to get demonetized like almost immediately. <laughs> Almost immediately. Okay, I will behave myself. <laughs> turn it off. Turn, turn it times? off for this one. Did we get demonetized? <laughs> turn it off like for this one. One? Many times. Yeah. There you go. There Many you times. go. Wait. There you go. Just do some <laughs> editing. All, all you need are a couple beeps. Right? Where's Where's Nate when you need him? <laughs> did, you, did you see Did you see that electricity just went? Power just went out. Awesome. Oh, that's uh, lovely. And you hey, still have uh, internet. Look, you're still here. 
Yeah, so you're right. right. Yeah, because it's on the UPS that will last ten minutes. <laughs> That's what battery. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I'll say mine usually goes for about four hours before it runs out of battery. But no, mine mine is a regular UPS, uh, the small ones. Okay. <laughs> uh, I had a great time, gentlemen. I will uh, catch you on the next one. Oh yeah, yeah thanks for joining us. I, be, I better I better go get dinner because it's like six oh six oh four and I'm hungry. Wait, hold on. Have, have a good one, guys. Eight oh four for me. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm gonna pop out two. Um, I will post this on the on the YouTube channel for anybody who wants to watch it anyway anywhere else or post it to somebody else. I will also make sure that that link is shared somewhere because I know that I'd used a different thumbnail last time, so it probably blended in a little bit. So uh, I will do that. Mm -hmm. I will also uh, make sure that the announcement for the next one is is appropriate because I think that as of right now the the event says. It says eight fifteen, so that'll be Fe February twenty third. Is is the next one, uh, eight fifteen p.m. Twenty third. Uh, okay, so I won't be on that one because it's going to be the late one. So I'll be on the next after one. Yeah, and then, uh, that's that's why it says twenty one for me. It's it's converting the local time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, right. and for then, me, um, it's two fifteen a.m. Yeah, and then the next one in the morning will be March fourteenth. That'll be the, that'll be the March fourteenth. Yep. All right. Yep. All right. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna pop off. Thanks, thanks everybody for joining. It was pretty. It was it was awesome. Have great discussion. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a yeah. lot of fun. As always. Thanks everybody I'll see for you joining. Next one. See ya. Yep. Later. Catch you guys later. That was fun.